In this video I'm going to show how to make a report that has a sub-report based on a cross-tab query. The database is very simple. Database tools, relationships. We have only three tables. Each table should have an order ID or a product ID, an ID in other words. A primary key. I always make that an auto number. That's the easiest thing to do. And then through that primary key, we have in the order details a foreign key that is based on that order ID, so I can have many uh, details in the same order. What is the report going to look like? It's going to look like this. It has all the products, and it has a sub-report that is based on a cross-tab query. So we make a sub-report for this one, that is actually this guy, that is what the sub-report is based on, and that guy is based on a query, a cross-tab query. So let's do that for step by step for 2013. If you have an older version of Access, um, I, um, I can only say that the interface is a little different basics are the same, but you may need to know a little more. So I developed for you a CD-ROM with more than 1500 slides that go through all these issues, including cross-tabs form and cross-tab reports. And this is the report section. You can find this at genesispc.com. So how did we do that? Let's uh, go to the query first. The query has the following structure. All the three tables. We put the product ID in the first column. We make it through the design option, a cross-tab query. So you have to specify what do you do in the total section and what do you do in the cross-tab section. I group by product ID. So I see every product only once. And I put that in the row heading. Then for the column heading, I did also a group by, but that is based on a formula. And the formula is as follows. This is the new name of that column. And then I use the function date part that has two arguments at least. One is, do you want to take the year part or the quarter part or the week part or the month part? Why, 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 why is the year a single M is month, etc. Order date is the field that we are searching in, and that creates the year part. Then the third column that is in the value section, we apply a sum function. First we name it, total colon, then the sum function, then the unit price, because there are two unit prices. One is from products and one is from order details. We have to specify from which table, times the quantity field. And the end result is what we saw already. Don't forget to do one more thing on this query, because those column headings, they don't really exist yet. So you go to the properties of that query, right click, properties, click there again, and make sure that in the column headings, you give them specific names, 1994, comma, 95, 96, or whatever your dates are. Okay, and save the query. Now we are going to make the main report and then the sub-report. First the main report. Report wizard. The main report based on the table products. And we want product name, we want the unit price, perhaps, and how many units in store, whatever else you want. Okay. It might be wise to add the product ID too, you don't have to. And next, next, I'm skipping all of these, and I call this one report. And there is the report. Closing this guy. It looks good. 
Now we are going to make the shop report. So now we have to go back to the main report. Go to the design screen. And as I said before, reports are always clumsy in my opinion. First of all, when you have this report, make sure that you never cross this border. Because if you do that and you print it out later on, then the part that goes past that border goes on page two. So page two is incomplete or page four or six. So be careful that you respect that border. What we are going to do now is we are going to insert here in the detail section. I made more space. We are going to put here the sub report. We do that through the design tools, design, and make sure that you get the subform sub report button. And click where you want it and draw it. Again, don't go past that border. The machine may not respect what you did, but we will find out. Use an existing report or form. We use the sub report that we just created. Next screen, define my own connections. The connection is the product ID from here and the product ID from there. Though we didn't show it in the subform, it's still available there. Next, call it subreport. It doesn't really matter what you call it because that thing will just pop up here as a label. I'm going to delete that label. So notice that this screen got a little past what we had before. So click on the edge of that subreport and use the shortcut shift arrow to the left. Make sure that it fits in there and draw back that border. And what, what we have at this moment is probably not what you expected. At least you get this information here. But we don't have the headers for which year it is. And besides, we have a huge box here that we don't need. And another problem is that we have scroll bars here. So we are going back to the design screen. Empty that report header. Delete that thing. And just move this border up. So there is no more report header left. Then we probably have to do a little more on those labels. They are too wide, so select them in front of them and use again shift arrow to the left. Do the same for the detail section. Select them all on that line, shift arrow to the left. And now we got this already. Looks already a little better. We still don't see the headers of which year and we still have the scroll bars. How do you fix that? It's probably a little more complicated. You, uh, you select the subreport outer box again. Go to its properties. Make sure that you are still on that outer box. Go to the format section in the properties and at the bottom show page header and page footer set that to yes i know it's clumsy but you have to do all that work then we have to get rid of the scroll bars at the bottom you do, that is a property of the sub report itself not the box the box is the connection between the two but now you click on that square there and you get the properties of the sub report. I'm, I'm going to the format section again. And notice that there is somewhere a property scroll bars. Set them to neither or neither. And page footer. No, we don't want the page footer, for otherwise you get this. You see there is the page footer. We don't want that page footer. Notice that we do have the column headers now. So we go back here. So the last thing we have to do is make sure you are in the properties of the subform. Okay. 
So make sure you click there. And we are in the properties, and we are going to say to the page footer section, not with a report footer. And the scroll bars, as we did already, neither. So now we got this. That looks already much better. All we have to do now is make this section shorter. So select the outer box again of the sub report and shift arrow up allows you to make that much smaller. Move up the border of the page footer. And this is what we got so far. So for each product you have now based on a cost tab query, you have these options. And it tells you for each year that you had implemented in the cost tab query what the situation is. If you want to know more about this, and I told you in older versions of Access it's a little different, this is your great help. It may look like it's an expensive CD-ROM, but realize that when you buy this, you can share it with your co-workers, with your employees, with your boss, with your entire company, and they can all copy it from this CD-ROM. You find it at genesispc.com.